So in this video I'm going to talk about voltage references. Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to do a video every day. So make sure you come back again tomorrow. I'm going to talk about basic components such as the TL431 which is really common. To some fixed references as well. There's a voltage reference board which you can buy quite cheap if you've made express. Main chat links down below in the description for these. And they're actually not too bad. And if you want to go really high end you can get one of these things. PDVS2 Mini from Ian Johnston. This is a variable voltage reference from 0 to 10 volts. Very accurate. We'll start with this first. This is basically effectively a Zener diode. Only it's not actually a Zener diode. It's treated like one. It acts like a Zener diode. I put an overlay on the screen showing the pin out and stuff like that. It's just a TR92 type package. No, the lighting's bad because of the paper I'm afraid. But it's not a transistor. It's a Zener diode. Kind of. It's also an op amp. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll probably put some overlays on the screen so you can see what I'm kind of talking about or some example circuits. I'm going to go to two complex of circuit on the paper. There's lots of examples of using this particular device. Now these are actually used really commonly, especially in things like switch mode power supplies. And I'll give an example right here. This board which I've been using as demo board for lots of things in these videos, in this beginner series I've been doing. Don't forget to click like and subscribe when you join the videos. Over here, right there, that is a KIA. 431, which is just a different manufacturer's version of the TL431 voltage reference. This is used as a reference for this power supply stuff in here, in the switch mode power supply. This is like one of the most common places you'll find one. So like I said, this is basically like a Zener diode. I'll put some overlays up. But to draw this out, basically it is a reference pin. My pen works. And you've got a, what is effectively a Zener diode. And then you've got anode, cathode and reference. Okay, so in this case, pin 1 is reference, which is 1, pin 2 is the anode, pin 3 is the cathode. So basically what this does is this point here, it tries to use as a reference point to control how much of a connection there is between anode and cathode. Just like a Zener diode, like a Zener might be a fixed voltage, you know, it might be 5 volts or 5.1 volts or whatever it may be. And it will just try and make sure this point here is, you know, that point there. And that point there are a certain voltage apart. All right? Those two points, you know, whatever the Zener voltage usually is. And this works in a very similar way, but it's not actually Zener. If, for example, you connect this pin here directly to the cathode here, and let's say you have a I don't know, put up resistor here, right? It doesn't really matter what it is, it could be like a 12 volt supply, for example. 12 volt power supply, I don't know, 330 ohm resistor, right? 330 ohm. And that goes to zero volts. What will happen is this reference will be fed from its output here. And what you'll get on the output here will be 2.5 volts. So if you just link the reference pin to the cathode, you get 2.5 volts. That's the basic reference, 2.5 volt reference, because it's feeding itself and it controls itself to be 2.5 volts, because it has a built in reference within itself. Now, if you want to make a variable one, let's say you want a different version. I'm just going to do this as a box this time to simplify the drawing. Reference, um, cathode, anode, right? And this time, you want to do this differently. You want to make it a different voltage. Just say you want 5 volts. I'll probably put an overlay, overlay on as well, but there's your 12 volts in, whatever it may be. And there's your ground. I'll just tow it under there, like that. Through a resistor. Get it right. Resistor there. Resistor here, all right? These are both, say, 10K, for example, right? They have to be exactly the same value. Now we've got the TL431. I should put that there. That could be, I should use 30 ohms again. So we've got 12 volt supply rail as an example. Could be something other than that. Could be 8 volts, whatever. So we've got a resistor here to drop it down. You know, exactly as you would do for a Zener. If you had a Zener in circuit, you'd use exactly the same thing. You put a series resistor with a Zener to get a semi-regulated supply. If you do it this way, if you use a voltage divider, which we talked about previously in another video for resistors, and a couple other things we've talked about, if you do two 10k resistors across here, so between zero volts and the output, that's a voltage divider by half, which means to get this at 2.5 volts, you must have five volts on the output, because that's going to halve it, so therefore the output's going to be twice as high. Let's say if you wanted 10 volts, could you do this differently? Absolutely. If you wanted four times the output from that, instead of five volts, you wanted 10 volts, it's certainly possible. You could change those sorts of values. You could go, say, 20k and 5k. 
Right, so that's four times the voltage. Here's a bag of voltage references I've got. So these are fixed ones. These are, I've got these from AliExpress, I think, tonight. So this is using the LM4040, 0.1% reference, apparently. So it's got a 2.048 voltage and a 4096 voltage. And it's just got some pins. Let's plug it in or connect up to those. Supply rail, ground, and you have your two outputs. So you can use those as a reference voltage for something as well. And being 2048 and 4096 could be handy for some digital division. In here I've got some Max 66250, I think it is. So this is a 5 volt reference. A chip there, so I've got a few of these. Again, another fixed reference. In here I've got a Ref 01C. This is another fixed reference. I'm not sure which voltage these ones are off hand. I might put an overlap there, show you what these are. Um, but having a selection is always handy. I haven't really used these yet, actually. Should do one day. Another thing you can buy is these things. These are from typically AliExpress and places like that. It's quite a common board. There's a lot of these out there, or variants of it. This uses the AD584LH. This device, which has got a few fixed voltage references in it. And depending on which jumper setting you use, you get different voltages out. So 2.5 volts, 5 volts, 7.5, and 10. And when you get these, you'll get this piece of paper with it, which tells you the actual voltages as measured at those settings. So this is what this actually measured on the Agilent 34401A. So these aren't super precise. You know, you can see that there's got some deviation from the nominal values. But the thing is, if you know exactly what the output actually is, it doesn't matter because you can still use the reference and use it as a comparison check. You know, if you want to make sure your multimeter is reading about right, you can get one of these things and at least it will be ballpark right because you better see, oh, you want these sorts of digits out of it. The thing with references as well, you have to make sure they're temperature stabilised. So they're warmed up properly. They've been on for, you know, half an hour to an hour ideally. Um, the longer they're on for, the better. I mean, there's also just examples of ones I've got sitting around. And this thing, which you may have seen me use in videos, and I've certainly used it several times in videos. Um, this is an awesome reference. Again, this needs to be warmed up for a period of time before you actually use it if you want true accuracy. Just like any reference or any kind of calibration source. And this can do up to 10 volts. Right? But it's not just that one digit. You can come and adjust this digit if you want. So, you know, let's say you wanted to have one millivolt. There you go, there's one millivolt. 100 microvolts. Oh, you can have that if you want. About 10 microvolts. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and it actually does it too. This is an awesome device. If you ever want a proper adjustable voltage reference, which you can use for all sorts of jobs, then um, you want to get a PDVST Mini. This is from Ian Johnson, so which you can kind of see his address down the bottom there. It's, you can't really see it. The injohnson.com. But if you just do a search online for PDVST Mini, I'm sure it will pop up. And this uses an LM399 voltage reference, which is a very good heated reference. And it's used in a lot of multimeters. Things like the Siglent STM3065X, which is a six and a half digit multimeter. That uses the LM399. Let's do a lot of other multimeters. It's a very common device. Hit like, subscribe, comment down below if you want to know more about anything in particular. I'll put a link to this and I'll put a link to this probably. Maybe to these too. I'll put some links down below for these things if you're interested in getting some yourself and having a look. There's a playlist over here for the Electronics for Beginners video series, so check those out if you're new into electronics or you're trying to learn more. Over here is a playlist YouTube things you should watch. Over here is a subscribe link which you should click on if you're not yet subscribed. And over here is a support link for Patreon if you want to help support the channel and donate a small amount of money each month. Or there's also a thanks link down the bottom there. Click thanks if you want to just do a one-off donation. Bye.